What's going on YouTube? Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to cover room acoustics and how to get good measurements from a room acoustic standpoint using REW, right? REW has a very basic, you know, and a very important feature uh, of that RT60 decay, which I want to actually use to show what type of um, acoustics I have going on in my room right so I have the theater area on on that side right there and then this is my music listening area where I listen to multi-channel music I listen to stereo music um, and so on and so forth so so I'll, I'll perform two me you know different measurements you know one would be using my Martin Logan montages the Pioneer Elite that you see behind me the other one would be with my Bowers and Wilkins uh, CT 7.4s and my SBS uh, SB 16 Ultra and the SB 3000 Ultra, right? And we will go from there. All right, guys. So let's talk about um, room treatments, right? Uh, what do I have in this particular room? So I have some uh, Oralex uh, sound absorption panels that I got from from Amazon. I have four of these over here, and then I have. Uh, these uh, Rockwell Com Comfort Bat R30 um, stone wool bat insulation with sound barrier. These are the DYIs. So this is a four inch thick panel. Um, DYIs, these were my, my brother in law is a professional drummer, so he had made a whole bunch of these for his studio. Oling Lab acoustic wood panels. Uh, these are 19.6 by 19.6 high performance acoustic foam, um, decorative oak plywood. I have two of these, I have this one right here and one here. I am thinking of uh, adding some to the front. Uh, then I also have, so these are the 4 inch thick DYIs. So I have these scattered all around, right? the room as you can see uh, and then I have a six inch thick which acts as a bass trap right in this corner because this is where I was getting most of the bass energy because I have um, the SB3000 right here the SB16 uh, Ultra is over there which is fine uh, so so this thing was literally shaking the screens you know in, in that window over there uh, ever since I put this panel and then these over here and then these corner base traps, right? I got these from Amazon. Um, these are also effective and then I have these <laughs> random ones over here. So you get the idea. I have some uh, ceiling, random ones up on the ceiling here in my multi-channel uh, music or stereo music uh, listening area. Don't have anything here, but I do have these curtains. These are acoustic uh, panels essentially. Uh, and uh, and and those and these are thick curtains. So I have, you know, a pair here, and then I have a pair over there, which I kind of close uh, when I'm watching movies. Uh, and and that's basically it. So the purpose of this is to show you guys what I have going on, right? So I have some ceiling ones over there too, up top. What I got from a room treatment perspective in this room. Um, and I want to actually go ahead and now show you guys what the RT60 Decay looks like in the theater area and in the multi-channel area or the music area okay all right so now that you have seen the types of uh, uh, acoustic panels and type of types of room room treatments that I have in in my room uh, let's go over some of the 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 readings right so I'll start with <clears throat> my uh, theater first, right? So in this particular case, I have the left and right uh, with Odyssey and with the subwoofer alignment done at 40 hertz, right? So this is the 40 hertz crossover that works best uh, in in my room. Um, <clears throat> my speakers again are the the Bowers and Wilkins CT 7.4s. So this this reading right here that you're seeing, this is basically for the, the front le uh, left and right with the subwoofer aligned. So once you have the curve, you what you do is you go to the waterfall and it generates the waterfall. Let me fix the limits here because we only want to see 
you know, up to 100 milliseconds, right? We don't care about what's happening way beyond that. So <clears throat> up to 100 milliseconds, and then, you know, I'm going all the way down to like 10 hertz here. Uh, those speakers and my subs don't, are not going to go down to 10 hertz. Like they probably, they go like to about 17 in combined, right? 17 hertz or so. Um, but let's start over here. So you can see it's straight, you know, from high frequencies down, it's pretty good. Right, no, no, no real changes. You know, from a delay standpoint, there's a little bit of a delay uh, at around 3.7 kilohertz, which is negligible. It's 2.5 milliseconds, um, and that's how it remains to about here. I, I have a feeling that ha it has to do with my couches. Uh, you know, where my couches are, uh, and that's you see that pattern all across. And then when you start to get into the mid mid band, uh, you know, mid bass area. It's still pretty good, little, little to no delay, and then this is where you know the subwoofers are engaged, and you have at about 240 hertz. It's about 5.2 milliseconds. The 160 hertz is about 7.2 milliseconds. It's all all pretty good, right? As long as it's not over, uh, you know, in, you know, hitting that this red area right here where you have 100 milliseconds, and it does go there. Once you get down to 40 hertz is 30.1 milliseconds, uh, 20 hertz is 95.3 milliseconds, you know, and, and it just keeps increasing. So, so one thing I know is I do need some bass straps, right? Even though I showed you what I have, I don't have enough. Uh, and that's what I need to do here. I need to figure out how to tame this bass over here, like from essentially from the 40, 50, 40 hertz range down to to 15 hertz right um, but you know regardless it does sound pretty good right so it's, this is just telling you how uh, you know the bass is behaving in this particular room in my theater area all right and then that's your your spectrogram then you click on RT 60 decay you hit generate and then you go into your controls and then you want to make sure you measure RT60 from 100 hertz to you know 11.5 kilohertz, right? Anything higher is just not you know, it's negligent because you can't even hear. I can't hear higher than that, anyways. Uh, and then anything below 100 hertz becomes pretty dicey because it's all over the place. So so 100 to 11.5 kilohertz is the range, right? And this is where our REW sets it at. Uh, and Gene, Gene Dallasella from Audioholics, he has done a video on this as well, and he also recommends uh, 100 to 11.5 kilohertz. So you click on calculate RT60. So in the high frequencies, it's at 331 milliseconds, right? Which is very good, right? It, it, a good measurement, according to Gene, should be, you know, is, is, is around 500, right? So anything below 500 um, is considered a good room acoustic measurement, right, or RT60 decay measurement. So I'm way, well, well below that, right? So I'm at, in, I mean, you look at the high frequencies uh, right here, we are at 334, uh, and then when you come down to like the, the mid-range area, it's still uh, 337, you know, so it's pretty good. And then, and then now you're going up a little bit, but 377, so it hovers between 377 and and three what did i say three eighteen right uh and then the issue and even then you know when you get when i get into like the bass frequencies right here um it starts to kind of go out of whack at about 159 yeah uh, at about 160 hertz right that's where the the rta 60 factor uh, rt60 i'm sorry starts to jump up like it's in, at about 100 hertz it's uh, 831 right that's not good and this is where i was talking about i think i need more uh bass traps uh, around the room to tame that bass right from a high frequency standpoint there the room is pretty you know in my opinion pretty dead uh not overly dead um you know i've uh, been to rooms you know uh, a friend of mine used to have like um, a basement theater where all the walls were just uh, you know they had uh, uh, essentially had uh, just like insulation um, 
throughout and that room amplifiers or uh, speakers just went there to die essentially it didn't matter you know how much power you put in there it was just the room was completely dead that was just too much right so so anything anything b uh, below i i want to say and and I, this is what i've seen and and read uh, is anything you know around 300 350 is a very good measurement uh, you get down to like 200 250 250 that becomes too too much right um, so i think i'm from a rta uh, rt60 decay standpoint from a, from high frequency standpoint i'm pretty good it's the bass frequencies in my theater which are lacking uh, to say the least right and that's where i need to to work on now let's switch over to the my, my music area right where i have the martin logan montage so i took two measurements with the montage right i took a measurement of, of let me take, get rid of this one uh, with the the montage in pure direct mode right um, and, and and in pure direct as you can see again the smoothing here i want to go to variable smoothing okay uh, so Obviously, I can make this, you know, one third smoothing, and it looks pretty awesome, right? But I want to see where the issues are, so I always use a variable which kind of tells you exactly what um, is going on in certain frequencies. The montages are rated down to like about 50 hertz, so anything more I'm getting here is a plus, but it's the room gain, right? Uh, in in my opinion. Anyway, so this is the 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 pure. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the M, This is the pure direct reading and then this is the uh, EQ'd with MCACC EQ'd reading right and I'm gonna actually do you know run, uh, show you the spectrogram and the RT60 decay uh, in both these uh, curves right so let's start with the pure uh, let's go down to the spectrogram, spectrogram. just gonna regenerate that um, adjust the limits here overall though I think it's pretty flat straight down to about uh, 60 Hertz even to the uh, the speakers frequency response uh, uh, you know limit which is 50 Hertz it's five five milliseconds which is awesome and then as you go lower it's still pretty good 30 Hertz is at 12.2 milliseconds still pretty good you know from for music I think this is a this is this is a very good setup, right? In my in, in 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 this particular case, right? Obviously, when you go down to 20 hertz, and this is again, this is all room gain, because uh, those speakers literally can't. They're not rated to go down that low, but somehow I'm getting that low of a frequency here. Uh, but this is the spectrogram, and then the RT60 in this particular um, area, right? In this particular area, the my my music listening area. So you see how this is basically this is using the pure direct mode and here for music I'm at 326 average is like 288 you know 293 I think it's still pretty good and this is there is this suck out right here and that's probably because of of the bass trap that's uh, that's in the corner over there but then there is a peak over here uh, which still is not bad it's still 500 508 at that 69 Hertz range then you go down to the 58 Hertz it's 350 50 milliseconds so so in pure direct right this is the pure direct reading right uh, it's it's behaving pretty pretty good right from RT 60 standpoint for music uh, it's not too dead and not too live uh, sometimes a lively room is you know is not a bad thing in my opinion too uh, all right now let's switch to the MC ACC, the EQ'd version. This is our MC ACC uh, adjusted curve. Gonna go to the spectrogram first. As this was our pure direct one that we had. Regenerate that. Fix the limits here. See the same pattern, you know, in that in those high frequencies. That one kilohertz went away. Uh, and then you have that 400 to 300 hertz, a little bit of a delay, 8.2 milliseconds. And then 
pretty pretty straightforward, right? Pretty straight actually down all the way down to the speaker's frequency response rate, which is about 50, 50 hertz or so. Uh, and then even at 39, 36 hertz, it's 15.7, still pretty good. 31, 20 hertz after EQing is uh, is 19.5. So I think that's pretty good, right? So 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 MCACC did do something. Uh, you know, which Odyssey couldn't, which is kind of weird, uh, but uh, it, it corrected some of the base issues, right? So now let's go to the RT60 decay. So again, remember <clears throat> there was a there was a spike here uh, at uh, around 126.5 hertz, right? Uh, in and the SPL level was at 61 there, but that spike is no more, right? So it's basically your highest is 399 down to 337 is uh, in your mid base, mid base. There's still that suck out there, but uh, high frequencies look awesome. 307. So in in this particular section, my my listening area, my music listening area, I think I'm good from an RT60 standpoint, right? The only thing I need to work on is essentially my uh, this is yes so this right here is the the CT 7.4s which to me you know high frequencies mid bass everything is pretty good in that 348 300 you know, 350 to 300 range it's the the bass um, not the deep bass but like the mid bass area right the 100 Hertz to about 275 Hertz I got some nastiness going on here, which I need to tame, and I, I and I am going to do something about it using bass traps. All right, so I hope you guys like this video. As usual, I'm very much interested in hearing from you your feedback. You know about what I just shared. You know the room acoustics, the RT60 uh, decay. You know the measurements that I shared. Uh, if uh, if you have any 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 thoughts, if you have any feedback, what I can do differently, please let me know. I will uh, be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. So as usual, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.